everyone, I'm Mind, and I just got another copy of the Lego Ninjago magazine. We are still doing island magazines, unfortunately. I'm really hoping the next one's Seabound, but anyway, you can see it says Awesome Two-Headed Islander Minifigure, also known as Polaric. This character's name is Polaric. And yeah, there's a Polaric minifigure here. That's pretty cool. We'll take a look at him after we take a look at the magazine itself. But let me remove that off the cover to start. And here you can see the full cover. Lego toy Polaric. It's got a shield, two heads, and a tooth dagger. New minifigures, Golden Ninja Power. It's interesting that they're promoting the Golden Ninja because those are legacy figures and there's a separate Ninjago Legacy magazine, so they don't usually promote legacy at all in the main one. But it makes sense because they have to do six months of island magazines and the island is like a 44 minute special, so like there's not much to make content based on it. So I'm very interested to see what's inside. There's a Golden Ninja poster as well, a little comic which still seems to be based on the island. So yeah, let's just get this opened up. Advertisement for Master of the Mountain, which is really strange because that's like sold out in most stores now because it's being replaced by island and seabound stuff. Table of contents, got two cool posters, find the island chicken hidden on each page, and then a little advertisement for the comic. Polaric, okay that's cool to see, they are actually calling him by his name here, they're not just calling him the Two-Headed Islander. Keepers of the Amulet, Polaric is the right-hand keeper of Chief Mammatus. His extra head gives him an advantage on an island where additional pair of eyes might save you from danger. Equipment, shield, umbrella, serving tray, protection from the ninja. The colorful painting also makes a good camouflage in the jungle. Bone Dagger, this knife is made out of the tooth of a mysterious sea creature, Wojira I guess, and ideal for preparing the perfect sandwich. Oh, okay. I'm second in command, and first at dinner. <laughs> Okay, so this is like a match thing. They do this a lot recently with these games. I'm not a fan of these games because they're really simple. You just find like the area that matches what. Yeah, not the most interesting, but it is a game. This is a little maze game right here where you have to lead Polaric to the finish line to get him to warn Mammoths about the intruders. All right, and there's ninja hidden in the border of this, and then you have to match that with the image that shows all the ninja. Tower of Heads. The stone statues are the coolest pile of heads on the secret island. They're perfect for a building goal. Grab a friend and build a Tower of Heads. Okay, interesting. It's just a little board game that you play using Lego heads. That's uh, that's strange, but th that's actually pretty fun. I can imagine having a lot of fun with that. All right, this is just a word search to find all the ninjas' different names. What is this Woo render? I don't. Rec I guess this is season eleven Woo, based on like that little bit of torso we can see. I always like to try to look for new minifigures in these magazines because sometimes I slip up and put one in there. But yeah, I don't think that's no. I'm pretty sure that's just season eleven Woo without his cape. All right, and then here we have the comic Jungle School. As always, I'm not going to read the comic out loud for you guys. I will show it on screen, so if you guys want to pause it and read it for yourself, you can. But if there's anything in particular that's interesting, I'll point it out to you guys. Alright, so it looks like it's Lloyd and Twitchy Tim, and Lloyd's trying to teach Twitchy Tim how to blend in with his environment. So they're putting, like, camouflage on and whatnot, and now they're sneaking into the Keeper's Village. Alright, this is a fine comic so far. It's very silly. It's just Lloyd teaching Twitchy Tim some, like, ninja skills. Nothing all too important or interesting, but it's something. I don't mind it. It's not, like, bad. It's just not that interesting. I like that little pig right there. He's pretty funny. Can we get him in a set, please? Vine value. Lloyd must swing over the canyon. These vines carry objects with different values. Add them up to write your answers below. Beware, only three of them add up to five. All right, this is like a pattern recognition game. And then here we have the posters. So first, let's open up to see this poster. That That's kind of awesome, not going to lie. That actually kind of looks really, really cool. This is all the art from the sides of the, like, legacy boxes, I think. Zane especially, I love how that looks. I wish the actual figure had the blue like that. Because the blue on the actual figure is really disappointing. Oh, what? When I just realized you have frames from the show behind them, like, as showing their legacy of just them in the show. That is so, so, so cool. I kind of love this poster. I wish there wasn't, like, a seam in the middle. Like, genuinely, genuinely, if I could get this on a nice piece of poster board instead of just, like, this piece of magazine paper, I would genuinely hang this up on my wall. This is so, so cool. Yeah, wow, this is awesome. Whoever designed this, nice job. All right, and then here's the other poster. It's the official poster for the island, and it says, What lurks on the island? This is a really cool poster. It's, like, the official poster for the island, so, of course, it looks good. This text right here is unnecessary. That's not on the official poster. I'm not sure why they added that in here. Because, honestly, it kind of takes away from the overall, like, really cool look look of this. But this is, once again, a really good poster. Honestly, these are some of the best posters we've gotten in this magazine. Both are super, super nice. And both are things I would, like, consider hanging on my wall if it wasn't, like, in magazine paper form. But it is genuinely, like, very cool. Alright, and back to the magazine, we have Eyes in the Jungle. This is a little game where it has two of the ninja with eyes mixed up, and you have to say, like, what two ninja are combined to make this face. So obviously we have Zane and Lloyd, Nia and Kai, which is a little freaky. Cole and Jay, I think that might be Nia and Jay? I'm not actually positive on that one, but I'm pretty sure that's Nia. And then Zane and Lloyd once again, and then you're supposed to draw your own. I think they did something like this in a previous magazine, but I think that's actually really fun. 
I don't know, something about that just makes me very happy. I know I would have, like, loved having something like this when I was younger. It's a simple little game, but it's just fun. And then now we are back to the comic. Alright, so it looks like they found another one of the statues, but this time around it's wooden instead of stone and it's, like, stuck in the tree. That's interesting. I don't think that's canon because I believe the canon thing is the stone statues were made by the first Minjutsu Master. But this is an interesting piece of lore if you want to consider it canon. Alright, and then Twitchy Tim tries to fight the statue and then he screams and it has all the keepers running to attack them. Okay, and Lloyd fights them off and they're gonna go follow them to find the ninja who have been captured, but uh-oh, Twitchy Tim forgot everything he learned. Isn't that wacky? Yeah, this is a fine comic. Also, I guess they aren't in the Keeper's Village. This is like a sub-village near their village? I don't know. Yeah, it was a fun comic. Like, everything felt in character. Like, I thought it, I enjoyed reading it, but in the grand scheme of things, like, this is one of their weaker ones, honestly. Definitely not one of my favorites. Yo, we have a certified golden ninja moments. Ten years ago, our ninja heroes first appeared to save the Ninjago world. Now they all have a cool golden minifigure. A perfect time to look back at the most epic, funny, and action-packed moments of each ninja. Now this is kind of interesting. They're showing a comparison between the golden minifigure and the minifigure they're based on. That's actually pretty cool. Lloyd, energy ninja. As Garbanon's son, a young Lloyd wanted to become a villain in the first season. He sided with the snakes and stole sweets. After the Sugar Rush wore off, he joined the ninja team. When the Overlord threatened Ninjago said at the end of season two, Lloyd had a truly golden moment and became the golden ninja after tapping into his powers. Golden fact, Lloyd's hair is from season 14, but his shoulder armor is first seen in season four? No, not correct. That was, that's season one armor. I don't know what you're talking about there. Even Lloyd himself wore it in Season 2, so I don't know where he got Season 4 from. They didn't, they didn't even wear this armor in Season 4. What are you talking about? Zane, Ice Ninja. The end of Season 3 also meant the temporary end of Zane. He vanished after defeating the Digital Overlord. Did you know that Zane had a brother? His wooden twin, Echo Zane, was also built by Dr. Julian. Wait, is Echo Zane wooden? I thought he was more... I thought he was metal. He was just rusty. Yeah, I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments whether Echo Zane is wooden or, like, brass. Golden fact, Zane's golden armor shows his mechanical side. Cole, Earth Ninja, don't be spooked. Cole became a ghost after staying in the temple of Master Yang too long in Season 5. After Day of the Departed, he became solid again. Only Cole was able to master this technique. The Spinjitsu Burst was unlocked during Season 13. Golden fact, the color of Golden Cole's helmets are in reverse of his Season 13 minifigure. I mean, kind of. He has gunmetal grants instead of black, but yeah, I, I see that. Jay, Lightning Ninja, the Master Lightning was the first ninja to learn Spinjitsu. Facing Samokai made him unlock its power. Uh, no, he was fighting skeletons, but he wasn't fighting Sabukai. Don't know where that came from either. As a true gamer, <laughs> as a true gamer, Jay felt right at home in Prime Empire. He not only had a really fancy suit, he also had acquired an entire fan club, the League of Jays. Golden fact: Jay's face is the same as on his original figure. What are these facts? What do you mean it's the same as on his original? If you're talking about his 2011 figure, no, it isn't. And if you're talking about like modern figures, yes, but that's the case for all of the ninja. They have their regular faces. What does that mean? He doesn't, like, yeah, he doesn't have a golden face like the original Golden Lloyd had, but none of these guys do. W what is this referring to? Alright, we have Golden Ninja Moments Part 2. Kai, Nia, and Master Wu are ready to show off their best moments, and it's your turn to design your own awesome ninja. Kai, Fire Ninja. Before Kai became a ninja, he was a blacksmith, but not a very good one until he forged his golden weapons when the Oni attacked. Kai's father, Rai, was kidnapped by Crux Necronics in Season 7. First thought to be evil, after a duel between father and son, it became clear that Rai was a hero. Golden fact, Kai's had a plaster in his left brow since Season 8. Also, they have Kai compared to his Legacy version, which is not accurate. The uh, Golden Kai is based off Season 11, not Legacy. So another weird one right there, and I'm looking down, what is this? Nia, Water Ninja. Nia started out being a hero not as a ninja, but as Samurai X. With her cool gear and even cooler mech, she's been a force of good in Ninjago since Season 1. After Nia discovered her water power, she became a fully-fledged ninja in Season 5, just in time to fight Moro and his evil ghosts. Golden fact, Nia's hairpiece is an entirely new piece. That, that one's true. But why are you comparing her to her season 5 design? If anything, this should be Energenia. That's really weird. Master Wu, this wise ninja has been lots of things. A baby in season 8, a teenage dragon hunter in season 9, a tea drinking, spinjitsu teaching, villain battling ninja master. Golden fact, Masterful, this is the only golden figure that's entirely, well, golden. And then you can design your own golden ninja right here. I also like this art at the top that shows the box art of all the previous seasons, right? That's the original, that's 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, Tournament of Elements, Possession, Skybound, Day of the Departed, Hands of Time, uh, Sons of Garmanon, Hunted, Legacy, Secrets of Forbidden Spinjitsu, Prime Empire, Master of the Mountain. That's Legacy this year, and then that one's the island. Yeah, I really like these few pages, though the accuracy is not the best. There's like multiple things where it's just like, w what? <laughs> like, I see what they're going for, but there's a lot of different times where it's just like, what are you talking about? But as a whole, I think this is pretty fun. It's just like a nice look back as to what uh, things were previously. All right, and then you have a little quiz about the comic right here, the featured fan section. As always, if you guys live in the UK, you can submit stuff to this and have a chance to win a free J keychain. And then we have an ad for next month's magazine, which comes with Island Lloyd. And look at that, it's a Seabound magazine, finally. 
It says Ninja Diving Armor Revealed. I don't know how much of a reveal it is, guys, but I'm excited that it's finally Seabound. And then Island Lloyd is a fine one. It makes sense. I expected to get him because he is the main character of the island. Would have preferred Cole or Nia, but I am excited to get another one of the space print here. And yeah, it looks like the comic's somewhat water-related, so yay, we're out of island comics after this one. All right, and then this is like a little stand-up thing that you can cut out for your room of either uh, Kai or Cole if you want. Interesting. Very, very interesting. But that's about going to do it for the magazine, so now let's take a look at the minifigure. So here's Polaric all built up, and in terms of the minifigure himself, I really like this figure. Right off the bat, I just think he's a really fun concept. I remember when I was a kid, I used to stack minifigure heads on top of each other like this to create my own characters all the time. But I'm pretty sure this is the first and only time LEGO's actually done this on an official character, having two heads stacked on top of each other. And I feel like LEGO just as a toy really lends itself to ideas like this, so it's kind of crazy we've never seen it officially before, so this character just feels so LEGO to me. And it's just very charming, and I absolutely adore it. And the overall look at the Keepers as a whole, too, is just really good. I love, like, the light lavender used on them. They have, like, wooden clothing on with teal gemstones pointing out. And then Paul Eric here uses both of the versions of the Keeper face prints, the one with the white markings and the one with the purple markings. And it's a cool way to incorporate both heads into one figure, obviously. But in terms of being a magazine figure, he's not that exciting to me. Because we did already get Rumble Keeper a few months ago, who's another one of the Keepers. And while Paul Eric is more interesting than Rumble Keeper, the only difference between the two figures is what's attached to the top of the head. Rumble Keeper has a mask, and Thunder Keeper has another head. But they have the same torso, legs, and one of their heads. So it just feels a little redundant to get this guy twice. I know obviously that's also what it's like with the keepers and sets, but I definitely would have preferred one of the ninja instead because I don't really need more of just like the same keeper. It's a nice addition if you want more keepers for your village and that's what I'll be doing with this guy, I'll be adding him to my keepers village, but when we only get one magazine a month I just don't think he's the most interesting minifigure. In terms of accessories too, it's one of the lamer ones in terms of magazine promos. The magazine minifigures almost always come with like really elaborate and really cool weapons, but every now and then they come with like pretty standard weapons and that's just always disappointing to see. This is just a two-piece tooth weapon. This has come in like multiple sets before. This isn't interesting at all. And then the shield is kind of cool to get, but this does come in all the island sets. So it's like nothing new or all too special. I definitely would have preferred something goofier and more elaborate than something like this. But those are all honestly minor things. As a whole, this is a fine figure to get. If you don't have Polaric yet, this is a nice way to get him. It's just for people who have a subscription to the magazine or people who already have lots of island sets, this is just one of the less interesting magazine promos. Not that every magazine promo has to be amazing, it's just this one in particular feels a little bit redundant. Oh, and of course, in between the two heads, there's a little ninja mask right here, so if you want, you can slide it over and have that covering up the top face. And there's how that looks. It's honestly pretty funny. There's a better look at his printing with everything removed. And there's his back torso print as well as back head prints. So overall, what do I think of this magazine? This one's been a really strange one. I think the highlight of this magazine for sure is the posters. The two posters in this magazine are really good, which is something like I didn't expect to say because I never really care too much about the posters in the magazines. But yeah, the posters are for sure the highlight here. The golden ninja section in the magazine is fun, but they get a lot of stuff wrong, which is really weird to see. And the comic itself is fun enough, but it's not too like necessary or anything. And then the mini figure pull Eric is fun if you don't have him yet but lots of collectors probably already do have him or it's very easy to like make a custom one so he's not that exciting to get here for existing collectors or new collectors he's fine like if you're interested in getting him I'd say pick up the magazine sure like this is a great way to get him but the one site he does come in is the jungle dragon which is relatively cheap it's only $40 and it's one of the best sets of this year, so I'd recommend you get that instead, like, if that's a financial option for you. So as a whole, I'd say, unless you're, like, looking to get those posters, you could probably pass on this magazine. Not that it's, like, terrible or the worst thing ever, but there's just better ones out there, and you're probably better off saving your money. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys thought of this magazine and the minifigures and everything in the magazine in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please press like, subscribe if you're new. I do Lego and Ninjago videos like this every single day, so if you subscribe, you'll be the first to see them. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.